right, all right. Hey guys, hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Crime Most Let's Play Minecraft. And today I put the mic in a new position, so I have no idea how this is gonna sound, but I'm gonna record a whole episode like this and then listen to it afterwards instead of doing a test like a normal person would do. I usually have the mic sort of boomed up over my over my face above my head and it does kind of eclipse my view of the screen a tiny bit at the top of frame and so today i'm trying it low and i was a little worried about it picking up too much uh wind noise but uh, it seems to be doing seems to be doing okay so we're gonna roll with it and we're gonna see what it sounds like in post i'm pretty excited for today we're gonna wrap up our villager career center today and we're gonna finish this puppy up and then we can start to populate it later on. This is gonna be fantastic. So, a couple things I did, I worked on here, just kind of finished the arch out here, which I know doesn't blend into the into the hillside yet. We'll take care of that in a future episode when we do some terraforming. But at least it has, you know, the arch finally. And of course we have our little bridge here. It goes down, not a big deal, but I carved this out, which I haven't. I'm gonna continue this motif here of our path around here, and it's gonna skirt over here this way because we're gonna build the chapel today. And I know I was calling it a cathedral, but I don't think it's going to be that big. Um, so I think maybe chapel is a better a better term. But as you can see, we have some building materials in those chests right over there. And I've already started work on it. But anyway, yes, the, uh, the pathway will continue through here. And then we're going to launch one of our typical... Uh, typical bridge uh, bridges here, uh, cobblestone with our, our fencing over to the chapel so that we can, uh, you know, we have a quick and easy way to, to access the chapel um, from this direction if we're just coming in from Camelot County because otherwise we have to go all the way in and come around because the other path is going to be over there um, around the backside. So there's something else I want to show you before we start building over here. So it's not, it's not, this is definitely not a visually or aesthetically pleasing build uh, down here. It is just a service area for where we're going to send, as, as you know, just hitting this button isn't gonna tell, you know, where to send that villager. Isn't gonna tell us what building we wanna send that villager to. We need a way to go down here. And so this is my very quick, very quick access tunnel. It not even has walls, it just has ladders. We come down here into this little, like I said, very simple hallway. Very simple corridor, very simple room. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our interchange room. So from up there in our library, they will come down the track right over here. So they come on down from up there. That's where the villager trading hall is, the library up there. They come down here. They roll into our track system here. And of course, this is just enough. This is just a holding setup, exactly like the upstairs version, just because we needed a way to hold them until we decided where we want to send them. So I only set it up with holding for maximum five at a time. We'll just have to remember that. Um, we can only hold five villagers here before we send them off. And then the reason this is set up in a loop is let's say we have five villagers down here and we send a sixth one because we don't remember how many we've got down here or whatever. Well, we don't want them to bottleneck here. They got to go somewhere. So basically this creates a loop. So the sixth one would come if all of these were turned around because there were villagers in all these slots, they would just continue down here and run the loop. And the loop takes them around and they would just continue looping. And they would loop and loop and loop and loop and have fun on the merry-go-round until we came down to free one of these guys, and then the, then that one that was looping would drop in. So here is a version of the train station system that we are going to use in the nether. It's exactly the same type of build. Uh, the decoration, of course, will be different. But let's say we want to send them to the brown robe area. So we punch that in, and that means that's selected. That means when we release a guy here, he's gonna drop down onto the track below us there, run that away, come around here, and he's gonna run back here, and since this one we've selected, this is the one that's off, but of course it's telling us that we've selected it, means that this is correctly positioned, this track is correctly turned, and we'll send him this way, and he will go down this way and on up to the shed that houses our brown robe villagers. And same thing for everything else. I didn't build it on camera, um, because I think we'll get more into this when we do it in our nether train station. So we have several choices. We have the brown robe village. We have the forge where the black apron guys go. We have the butcher shop where the white apron guys go. Um, we're, gonna, we're going to have our chapel where the clerics go. And then we have retirement. Now, what does retirement do? Well, let me show you. So eventually, you know, we're gonna have to get rid of some villagers because we'll just have too many in the system while we hunt for good librarians. 
Um, so what will we do with those villagers? Well, obviously in the game Minecraft, you know, we could just take a villager and ship him off to a lava pile and basically get rid of him that way. There's something vaguely creepy about that. Um, and uh, I will probably have to do some of that type of removing of villagers. Um, it just might have to happen because it is a game, but there's something vaguely creepy about saying, well, we're just gonna kill the villagers that we don't want. So for the time being, I created a retirement center. And this is, uh, hopefully you guys find this neat and I will show you what happens, what will become of our retired villagers. There we go, turned it on to retirement, get in the cart. Here goes our retired villager. We're gonna follow the exact same path that he takes. Let's find out, man, is it gonna hurt? Is it gonna hurt? Oh, we got punched on the water. And now we're taking a little water tour. Going down a little slope here. I'm, I'm, I'm not pushing forward or anything. I want you to see exactly the, uh, the the speed at which the villager himself will be moved. So we're just flowing. We're not fighting the current. Uh, we're just coming down here to find out what's next. What's, what's ahead of us? Oh, it's a water elevator. That's correct. So once we're in here, the villager will jump. And so we uh, hit our space bar and we jump up and we go up and we go up. And here we are, we end up here in our village. So this can be used to populate our village here. Our retired villagers will become part of our community here in the main villager career center village. So I gotta grab that mine cart because that is the one thing that I have not done yet, which is actually finish out where the collected mine carts will go once we send a retired villager to his retirement home. Uh, because obviously he gets ejected from, a, from the mine cart and the mine cart itself for now just ends up right over here. So what I'll do is actually have a, uh, I'll have the track continue on over here to maybe maybe uh, meet up with the hallway um, and I'll just have a, uh, we'll just set up a typical cactus, um, cactus, you know, cactus breaking minecart system uh, just to put it into a chest so uh, we can collect the minecarts back. Oh man, we're finally we're riding some minecarts somewhere. I love automated travel. I've missed it so much, I, I, I forget, you know? I got the horses and stuff, which I never used to do. And the horses are definitely fun, but you still have to control them and everything. And yeah, I really like, uh, I love the minecart system and the traveling system in Minecraft. Um, it's just so, it's got this very, um, oh boy, we have all kinds of mobs out here and we've gotta, we've gotta police this area up. I need to sleep. All right, so anyway, yes. Um, what was I saying before I ran into those people there? Um, oh, I love the minecart travel system. Yeah, it's just it's it's sort of like Minecraft initially for me um, when I first started playing it, it was all about the minecart travel system and everything because I was like, man, it's like having your own, you know, me having come from from building miniatures and stuff. I always I always liked, you know, model trains and electric train sets and stuff like that. And Minecraft for me was sort of like having my uh, you know your own model train set world but being able to actually ride the trains through the world i thought you know it's really cool so i love doing it and i know we just don't we don't have anything set up yet in this world but they're coming train tracks and minecart systems are coming so yeah and uh, one of our community members here on the crime mo channel um tj todd he mentioned that he likes uh, some psychological uh psychological thrillers and I was like, oh, that's a that's a really good category. There are some really good movies in, in that category. Um, it's kind of a broad category too, I, I suppose. But it is, uh, it is very cool. What falls in that category? Silence of the Lambs, Seven, Memento, Jacob's Ladder is an excellent one. How about Jacob's Ladder? Do you guys like that movie? I mean, that's an older film, but it is, uh, well, it, it is intense, man. I really like Jacob's Ladder. I think it's a fantastic film. Um, directed by Adrian Lyne, Adrian Lynn. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. I don't know why, I'm not, I don't know how to do that. I'm gonna use a little bit of glowstone in this build. Um, exposed to glowstone because I think, I think it works kind of nicely in the church setting. Just, we're just gonna have a little bit before we go any further in, in good psychological horror or thriller movies. Um, I will mention that movie that I had mentioned two episodes ago that I was gonna get, that I did have tickets to go see the new Rob Zombie movie 31. And we went and saw that movie. And that movie is atrociously bad. That that is a horrible movie. Um, it is just, it's just poor, poorly made, extremely poorly written. The acting is just goofy, and I mean it's just bizarre. Uh, Malcolm McDowell's in that movie, which I was surprised by. Um, and apparently Rob Zombie crowdfunded that film. Um, 
that's how he made it. But it is uh, even I, I mentioned my my producing partner who got us the tickets loves horror films. Even he was like, "What what what the heck did we just watch? Like what was that?" And uh, yeah, none of us have any answer for that because that was not just bad bad movie. You know, I know how hard it is to make a film. Like I totally I totally understand what goes into making films and how difficult it is but uh there is such a thing as you know maybe reading a script and going uh well this is all lame let's not do any of this and uh there is also like watching stuff in camera and going why would you why why do you think that's cool like what about this makes you think that that is cool i don't know man anyway so i highly do not recommend the movie 31 and uh whatever but anyway let's do some good movies uh psychological thrillers seven's got to be one of the best um seven and silence of the lambs of course those are excellent movies and um yeah seven is by one of my favorite directors another psychological thriller which is not really i don't know if thriller is the right word for it and not a lot of people saw it and some people who see it don't they don't like it (laughs) but um there is a movie by the same director david fincher that uh, he did called the game And that is a very fun film. I I really enjoy the game. Yeah, if you like puzzle movies um, or just sort of like what's going on here and trying to figure it out, uh, that's that's a good movie uh, called The Game with uh, Michael Douglas. And uh, yeah, that's that's a fun flick. So I want some planter boxes in front of the windows here. So we will do this and put our flowers in there. Now we're gonna add some wood accents to the uh, corners of the uh, chapel. I thought that would sort of sort of make it fit in a little bit with the way that villages are usually built with the you know the oak wood and the and the other things that they have going on there and then we can do this one here as well all right so that's looking pretty good there yeah so our side entrance is here and of course we're gonna have stairs that go up there i think we will also have just like what we had in the on the main entrance we'll have a a light there to keep spawning down and yeah since this since these paths here these two paths here this one here and the one on the far side the main the main entrance over there since they lead to the chapel i thought we would not we would use the glowstone and we'll use stone in the middle instead of oak wood planks this is the chapel the, the church or the temple or whatever you want to whatever you want to call it um but it's 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 probably a special building and of course the villagers might you know want uh, a slightly upgraded path leading leading to that uh, to this building so we'll see uh, we'll kind of accentuate that by using this uh the stone instead of the um instead of the oak oak planks so we've got the first level done um it's going to be uh, sort of a wedding cake style build where it just towers up a little bit i don't have the glass or any of the details in or anything this is just uh the first few uh just the walls and stuff which is the bulk of the build of course and we've got whoa we've got this side going as well so you can see here with the door closed there we go same thing just mimics the other side and it's just a little shorter it doesn't have as double wide windows and it doesn't have double wide doors so it's just narrow narrower on this side so now we got our basic structure here and we mirror both sides here and then on this side it'll be slightly different so here we've got our we've got our six yeah like that of course these come up here like that and we'll continue that and then here we're going to do the same thing we'll have another column go up there and there and there and then here this one is is the next window but it's only going to be three wide at the base because it's a narrower our our building is narrower so it's not a square although i should have probably done that that looks great right it's coming along coming along looking very nice i think All right, we're not done yet. I will take a nap here and then we'll come back with some more of that built. Thing we're dealing with now is we wanna be able to see this stuff from the bottom. I mean, from down there. And it's hard to to see the top unless you make it tall enough um, to be able to see it from the ground. We will cap these off in the middle. Some more cobble just to keep that look look and feel going as well so we don't lose that. And now we can do, so now that's interesting, I actually, build that in in the in my test build but maybe we'll leave this open and see what it's like open hmm let's uh let's go down and take a look where's our main entrance here right over there let's uh 
let's take a look real quick and see what we think. Okay, now I don't have the glass in, of course, and then that's gonna cover a lot of that. I think that up there is too much. I wasn't gonna put glass up there at all, so I think I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in, like my original intention was, and then we'll lay in the glass. This is a very, you know, summery kind of church, summery kind of temple type thing. It's gonna have a nice green feel to it. And I, I really like the lime green glass. I think it's it's just a very pretty color. Obviously you could do any, you know, we could do all kinds of patterns. I mean, I tried out all different sorts of colors and everything. And then in the middle here of these great big windows on the top, uh, for the middle color, obviously I chose blue. And I don't know, I just thought it was kind of cool. So obviously I was going for the, the lime green to yellow. That's, I'm, I'm going for some sort of implied gradient you know, sort of a flow of the color going up to a uh, one color going into another. And then the blue is just sort of an offset color. I tried red and I tried purple and stuff and I just happen to like the blue. I think this is sort of a, fits the uh, area that we're in. It's, it's nice, it's just sort of laid back. Well guys, here we are in the little village center. So uh, there's our build, there's the chapel. This is the little bit we can see from over here. Um, between the two buildings, but I was gonna walk us around so we can see what it looks like when we come in from the far side. I'm feeling pretty good. I think it looks really nice. I wanna go over there and terraform just a little bit, and we have to put our flowers in the flower boxes, so let's go do some of that. But this way, I can show you the, uh, the pathway, you know? So we can come around here by our farms. Our guys are all hanging out here, and here's our new walkway. So we come out here, and I put a little arch there. That doesn't really, doesn't really, it, it's just a simple little arch here. I mean, I might put some stuff up there on, uh, you know, um, I don't know what I would do here actually. Just a little archway, just sort of a, an exemplary like, hey, I, I thought it framed the chapel nicely as you come up the stairs. All right, so um, yeah, I put these these nice pillars up here. I thought they looked pretty cool. They're very simple, but um, yeah, that's this very simple design here with the crossbar, you know, I use little stone buttons there for a little detail like pins on the sides or rivets or whatever. And we just sort of, Put a couple stairs and stones, cobblestone slab, sink them down into big, uh, big uh, quality, you know, uh, stanchions into big supports here to hold this bridge up. But uh, it does anchor it, make it feel like the bridge is very solid as far as getting across to the chapel. Look at that. I just, I really like the shape. I think it turned out very nice. How's that looking there? Come on, give me some more flowers here. What's going on? No color. There we go. We got some flowers, some greenery going up to it. That's pretty nice. Yeah, out there being kind of wild is okay. Um, the church probably should have a fence around it or some kind of thing there, but because um, there are doors, actually, that is that is kind of a key point. I do have a door on that side that is not protected, so maybe I need to probably change that because zombies can come and obviously break down a wooden door. So I should probably make a little yard on that side that has a little fence. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of, I love this gradient right here. This is fantastic. Going from the, from the light here and becoming dark at the top. Now, this may be totally wrong, but I just wanted to check it out because from back here, I just started to notice that it looked a little, oh, oh. I think that's kind of cool. You guys think, do you guys agree? I like I like this under here, uh, the oak wood. It kind of ties this in rather than just being on the corners. It kind of ties the whole thing in. I think we're gonna do it. Let's do it really quick. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. I think it looks very nice now. Yep, something about that. those little two blocks on the edge were bothering me, so. All right, guys, well, there we go. There's the chapel, and of course we can uh, bring, bring uh, you know, man, I think next episode we will start bringing some villagers over and uh, making sure that the system w works correctly. But I think this is a pretty fantastic uh, little village here, our career center. And um, yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys liked everything you saw today. Let's take a little quick, um, let's do one last thing, which is, uh, do I have anything here I can drop? Yep, don't need seeds. Uh, let's do one last thing here. All right, so there's one last thing we can do before we end the episode here, but thank you guys so much for hanging out and for checking out the uh, the chapel and everything. I hope you guys dig it, but uh, let's do one last thing before we leave. Come on. There we go. There we go. So let's see how it works. And send us away. Oh, down we go. 
All right, fully functional. This should put us in our loop and our loop should drop us into one slot here in our villager sorting system. Yep, right over the track. That's our tunnel underneath there, our little access tunnel. And here we are. All right, and of course I gotta come down this way and we can get out on the service side. But all right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. Hope you liked the builds. And next episode, we will actually bring villagers over here and actually see it in action. Well, all you guys have a great day, a great week, and uh, I will see you guys later on. Woohoo! Crimo's out of here.